Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. So this is not one of those videos that are fun to make and uh, one certainly that you have to have a little humility. Um, I made a huge mistake and I want to talk to you about it because I want to let you know that even though you've been in this hobby for a very long time and you're pretty educated and knowledgeable about what you do, there's always these little things that you make a mistake and uh, it can be deadly sometimes. Now, I want to start off by telling you that um, in one of my main, um, I think it's 120 gallon tanks, it has about 10 discus in it and a variety of ditter fish and corridoras and plecos and that kind of thing, one pleco. And, uh, I noticed uh, about a week ago that there was a couple of little spots on the tail of um, a couple of my prized discus fish in that tank. And I wasn't sure what was going on, but I didn't want to take a chance, so I used a medication that was very mild called Polyguard, which is something that you would use uh, if you were adding new fish to your tank, just as a precautionary medication. And I gave it three days. Uh, did a water change of about 20% or 30% excuse me 30% and uh, of course uh, thought everything was fine didn't think anything about it came back down and looked at this tank about an hour or two after uh, doing the water change and I noticed one of my larger discus probably an 8 inch guy that's been around a long time some of these fish in this discus tank have been around five years or more and uh, they're, they're very, very special fish to me. They're, like I said, they're, they're in my home, and it's a nice 120-gallon tank. And uh, I noticed that the, that fish was acting funny. It had sort of clamped fins, but not really, and was hanging out uh, in a corner, not really wanting to participate. It did eat. That wasn't a problem. But I, I just realized something was a little bit off. The next day, I checked on him, and he looked absolutely perfectly fine. Looked perfectly fine. And uh, what it was was a scheduled dewormer that I do periodically. And there was a schedule for that tank and three or four other tanks to uh, get dewormed the discus. And uh, I used a product called um, Cloverleaf Absolute Wormer Plus. If you haven't used that before, it is a good product, but I have to tell you, you're going to have to be careful about this kind of thing because I ran into a serious problem here. I went ahead and dosed all my tanks that uh, were scheduled for this dewormer, and I got to the, that particular tank and mixed everything up as I normally would. Nothing different or unusual about what I was doing. and. Uh, went ahead and uh, th this is a medication that you shake really vigorously if, if anybody's used it before they kind of know the process for this but you shake it very vigorously for about a minute to make sure that it's all dissolved and then you kind of dump it across the top of the tank and it looks a little chalky for about 15-20 you know, minutes or so and then the water just basically after it dissolves all the product uh, goes back to looking very clear um, I went to bed that evening and thought everything was fine. I got up the next morning and seven out of the ten fish in the tank were laying flat on the bottom of the tank, still breathing, but not getting up. The one fish that was sitting in the corner acting totally fine, uh, and one other fish uh, that it happens to be a fish that is uh, paired up with this particular fish. I don't let them breed, but it was paired up with it. It was doing fine as well. The rest of the fish in that tank were all flat on the bottom of the tank, and I was like in a total panic. Now, some of the things that I saw immediately were the blues or the snakeskin blue or any of the darker colored fish were very dark, number one, and it almost looked like they had discus plague. And I was like, that can't be. I mean, this is just this just happened so fast that it has to be something to do with that warmer. 
And then I got thinking about it and I thought, you know, I only did a 30% water change from the previous medication. There had to have been some kind of toxic, um, I don't know if it was a toxic reaction to the two medications going into the tank because I thought all of the rest of it was out. I should have probably done my homework because I'm not perfect. I got to tell you guys, I'm going to use some humility here and let you know I'm not perfect and I'm learning things all the time myself, but I probably should have. Uh, after using that medication, I probably should have put some carbon in there and ran it for two or three days doing water changes. All I did was a 30% water change because basically Polygar supposedly dissipates after three days and uh, there's very few traces of it in the tank. Well, I found out that that's not quite true. The Polygar may not be effective after three days, but it certainly is in the water and a 30% water change just doesn't do it as far as uh, getting uh, that medication out. So my fish were in bad, bad shape. It looked like their bodies had been burned. Uh, there was like that pasty look all over many of the, I think seven or eight out of the 10 discus in the tank had that pasty look to them. Some were laying flat. Uh, none of them were breathing hard. And the funniest thing about it is, is when I would feed, they would all come over and feed. And then as soon as they were done, they'd go back and lay on their sides again, or they would sit on their sides at the top, not gasping for air, just kind of hanging out there in that particular spot. And uh, for three days now, I've been sort of trying to figure out what do you do to take care of this. Well, what has happened here basically is a burning of the uh, skin which destroyed the slime coat on many of the fish. And uh, of course, uh, when that happens, the probability or possibility of a secondary infection is very, very, very high. And so I've been watching them for two or three days, and just tonight I realized that they're getting better, but they're not getting there to the point where I feel confident that these guys are going to make it. Now, I haven't lost a single fish yet, but I have uh, decided to go ahead and put a um, bacterial and fungal uh, medication in there after running carbon in there for the last three or four days and doing about seven or eight water changes, I did decide to go ahead and put a fungal and bacterial um, medication in there, um, which is Sulfaplex. And that was what was recommended to me by uh, some dealers that I work with and get most of my discus fish from. So I went ahead and did that. Um, Concerned a little bit about adding more medications on top of all of this, but pretty confident at this point here that none of the other medications are in the tank. Now, this will not hurt the filter bed. Um, the nitrification cycle will not be interrupted, hopefully. There shouldn't be any problems with that. It can be a little bit hard on plants, but I don't have a ton of plants in this tank, and I was planning on actually redoing the whole tank with new plants. I love the layout and the scape in the tank, and it's in many of my videos. Um, I will add a link so you can see which tank that is. I'll add that in the bottom here. But uh, I'm not perfect. I want to, I wanna, you know, come clean with this because I want you to understand that if you get into this hobby, you are going to make mistakes. I don't care how long you've been in the hobby or how good you think you are at this or whatever there is always something that is going to trip you up and you're going to learn from it. And sometimes you're going to learn from it by losing a bunch of fish or making some sick fish or making some fish very sick like I've done. I haven't lost any and I, I'm hoping that I won't. I'm hoping that this is going to take care of it and they're going to come around. Some of them are still eating, a couple of them are not. They're picking at food but they're not eating. But and most of them are not laying flat, but they're actually, you know, getting around the tank, but they're moping. And it, it's just, you know, you can sense when your fish are not right on, uh, you know, right on the spot, looking good and feeling good like they normally do. You can tell when something's off. And I can still sense that something is very much off with this tank. 
So I wanted to kind of put this video out. I hesitated at first because I thought, you know, nobody uh, probably cares about this kind of thing or whatever. But I think it's important to let everybody, first of all, understand, uh, don't mix medications so closely together unless you are you know running carbon in there getting all the old stuff out no matter how benign it, it may appear to me because polyguard is not a heavy duty medication it is something that i use for transitioning fish from tank to tank uh, or new fish to come in in a quarantine tank i use polyguard all the time as a preventative and I've never ran into this problem before, but of course I've never used this Cloverleaf Absolute Wormer Plus before uh, within a few days of having that out of the tank. Uh, you've got to run carbon, you've got to do a lot of water changes, and you've got to make sure that uh, your tank is in good shape before adding something like that. Uh, this Wormer medication is no uh, no nonsense stuff, man. It is serious business. I use it all the time, and my fish do not have problems with hexamia or parasites that are internal. Uh, it does get rid of a lot of other things, such as uh, gill flukes, uh, other kinds of worms like ringworms, white worms, things like that. So it's a very, very good product. Something I'm very familiar with, but I, I just missed the step of waiting a little longer, doing a little more um, water changes and adding the carbon in there before I did the dewormer. I should have just delayed the wormer, the dewormer for another four or five days and took care of this uh, in a way that I was sure the tank was clean. So the lesson to be learned out of this and the reason why I'm telling you this is because I can make a mistake Anybody can make a mistake. Please be careful with medications that uh, you don't mix them together by accident. Even if you think your tank is absolutely perfectly clean and everything is in top shape, do not allow yourself to add medications so close together that there's a possibility that you can mix something together that is going to become toxic to your fish and create the problems that I'm having. So, uh, you know, I'm being a little hum uh, having a little humility here, I'm being a little humble about this because I want you to know that uh, I make mistakes too. I'm not perfect. I certainly uh, don't have these problems normally, but again, it doesn't matter how long you've been in this hobby and you've been doing it, it's, it your possibility of making a mistake is still there and it happens when you least expect it and over the silliest little things that you think that you, you caught everything and it's just not going to be a problem. So I just wanted to let you know that uh, I'm working on this and I will keep you updated as to what happens to my tank, but please be careful about mixing medications and uh, making sure that you use carbon and lots of water changes in between put something off for a day or two. I mean, worms, uh, in, you know, my fish probably didn't even have worms. It's a preventative that I do every, every four months or so. And uh, it has served me well over the years doing that. But I certainly don't want anyone to think that I'm perfect and that I'm not capable of making mistakes. So be careful with your medications. Make sure you run carbon in your water to get rid of those medications and also do plenty of water changes before you even think about adding anything else into your tank, uh, whether it's a regularly scheduled medication or whatever, uh, just don't do it because it can be very heartbreaking. I don't know if I'm gonna lose some of these fish or not. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to, but then, you know, I added a new uh, medication in there today because I know that these guys are suffering from some kind of a secondary infection. I can tell by the way that they're behaving and uh, some of the, the blotchiness on their, uh, their uh, uh, bodies. And uh, I'm hoping uh, this sulfaplex will, uh, it's a fungal and an antibacterial and protozoan uh, medication. So it should work really, really well for taking care of this. 
I have run carbon, as I said, and I've done about seven water changes, so I'm very confident there's nothing else in the water that is going to uh, create an environment where these fish are going to, uh, you know, just get way too much and it's going to be, you know, a bad, a bad thing to have done. So thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. And I want you, you know, to understand that I'm going to always be honest with you on this channel. I'm not going to hide things from people. I'm not going to tell you that everything in my life is perfect and whatever. If something's going wrong with some fish and I did something myself to create that environment, I'm certainly going to share that with you because number one, the main thing is I don't want you to make that same mistake. And number two, honesty is everything. You know, if you can't trust the person that you're asking to trust you with a hobby, which I'm doing all the time, I'm asking you to trust me with things and uh, you know, trying to be knowledgeable and make sure that I understand what I'm putting out there as far as content. Anyways, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. I hope everybody will be thinking of me and hoping that these fish pull through. Uh, there, there's a lot of money in that tank, number one, but you know, even more than that, these guys are, you know, they've become very special to me. They're little friends, kind of. Uh, I know it's not a dog or a cat or something like that, but anybody that owns these fish and have had them for a long time understand where I'm coming from on this, that you do get attached to them. And, uh, you know, it's heartbreaking when, you, when something like this happens. So, uh, you know, keep, uh, keep a good word out for me, a few prayers that things... Uh, uh, turn around and uh, these fish are doing better in the next day or two because that's going to really be very very important to uh, you know to me anyway but anyways thanks to you for joining me I appreciate it if you have not subscribed to the channel please take a minute and do that give me a like on this one even though it's not a very positive uh, message that I had to put out here tonight but give me a like on this Leave your comments down below. Let me know if you've done something like this before. And, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very frustrating when you do something and you know you did it and you should have known better. So, And also share this video with your friends because this is an important topic that uh, I would like to make sure that gets out there so that other people don't make a mistake. Because even though I got lucky... Uh, I could have easily lost all of these fish. I really believe that if I hadn't, um, if I had waited a couple of more days and, like I said, ran the uh, carbon and did a few more uh, water changes, I probably wouldn't have had any problem at all. But uh, I want to make sure you understand that these are things that are very important to remember. So thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. And uh, we're all uh, kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of sick around here about what's happened. But uh, I think it's all going to turn out okay. Thank you for joining me, and we will see you on the next one. Until then, we're out of here.